You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another epic episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul and I'm here with my friend, colleague, and tech expert, Mr. Jason Bache. Jason, welcome to the show. Thanks. Now, typically Jason and I really go to a lot of conferences together and we have a good time reviewing and taking a look at all the new products that are coming to the industry this year. Now, here today, we're going to talk about all the new products that are gonna be drone related. Now, we're excited because we're gonna see some things that are not really drone related, but may have an impact on the industry as a whole. Now, Jason, I don't know about you, but there's a couple things I'm really excited to see. Number one, we're expecting a decrease in price in LiDAR. Will we see new LiDAR units this year? Will we see new pieces of technology that may make our jobs easier? Like the new DJI Ronin S, which is a handheld gimbal for any mirrorless or any DSLR camera that you have. Now, that's something that I'm pretty excited about. Oh, absolutely. I think they should have done this before they actually did the full-size Ronin. Yeah, no, I agree as well. But one thing is yet to be seen. What happens if the gimbal becomes unbalanced with the camera? Will the lens knock against the handle and break the lens like a lot of other competitors to DJI? We're really excited to find out about that and so much more. You know, Jason, I'm not really sure where to even get started, but what are you here to see? What do you want to see? I know one thing you guys should be aware of is that Jason is actually here filming his own show for another agency we are really excited about. You want to tell the, the audience all about that? Oh, K-A-K-U in Maui. Yeah, we are, we are credentialed legitimate media. Yeah, we are. So what are you excited to see here at CES? So actually, I'm going to be asking people about net neutrality. Now, net neutrality is a big deal as Agit Pai decided not to make the CES conference this year. I wonder why, Paul. <laughs> For fears of his life. For fear of his life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you rescind net neutrality, which affects just about every business. And country. then pretend that it's for a free market. Yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, you probably have an X on your back. So what type of reaction do you think you're going to see? I think everyone, everyone, I think, who knows anything about tech is... Uh, probably thinking this is a bad idea. And my, my real question, and I can't predict the answer, is why and how it's going to affect each particular industry. Yeah, it should be interesting. Well, before we get started, let's hop into a couple other things we're gonna see. DJI will be here. I'm also looking forward to Sony's new releases, and we're gonna be heading to their media event tonight. So stay tuned, but for now, let's go right to the show. Check it out. So Sony just released this new RX0 camera, which is quote unquote from Bob over here, says that is the world's smallest production camera. Now I think this could actually put GoPro out of business. It shoots super slow-mo, so 960 frames per second. You can actually link multiple cameras together to get this amazing image. And what I'll say is this could kill GoPro. Why? Because it's a 24 millimeter lens, it's aspherical, no fisheye. But also it's got full control. You can even plug a uh, microphone in there, you've got SD card ports, and full control like you would with an RX100. By the way, the RX0 is also waterproof, shockproof, and uh, is about, I would say, a little bit wider than a GoPro. As far as width goes, a little bit longer, but not nearly as high. And I think this is an amazing opportunity for you guys who need those extra angles to use these cameras in your production. Frankly, I think this is really exciting, but it's exciting for me because I would like to link some of these together and fly it below an octocopter, like say an S1000. So looking forward to finding out more about this. Again, it's the RX0. One thing we found really interesting while at CES was discovering the new Tello drone. Now this was actually created by a partnership between DJI Intel and a company called Rise, R-Y-Z-E. Now this is a really good training drone, but it's also really good for training coding. So this drone could be used in educational purposes to teach students how to code. Now students would use the Scratch language, which is a very simple language, to not only learn how to code, but learn how to teach the drone to do things like flips, but also make the drones work in unison. You could have multiple Tellos working together to create performances done by DJs and other things. So being able to code this drone and also being able to fly this drone for a hundred bucks 
is a pretty good steal. Make sure to check it out on the DJI store or in a store near you. Again, this is the Tello. All right, guys, we're here with Paul Pan, one of the designers, right, yeah. of with DJI, and he's been around here for a long time and very knowledgeable about the new Ronin S. So tell us, what is new with the Ronin S? So the Ronin S is our first uh, single handle system that's been made specifically for uh, DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Um, it is uh, something that we've been in developing essentially since when we started doing the Ronin M. Uh, we always had the idea of trying to make that into a single handle system uh, because we were finding so many people taking the handles off and then using it just like one uh, handed gimbal. Um, and so we, we then started to uh, develop the Osmo series, which have been single handed, uh, but they are using our cameras. Uh, this is something that we've made for third party cameras. Uh, it's, uh, it's got everything that our recently launched Ronin 2, the professional gimbal has. Uh, it's got the same technology. It has push, pill, push, pan. Uh, it has very strong motors. Um, now the difference compared to other gimbals on the market is that, as you can see, the motor is not blocking the screen. Uh, typically you have a 90 degree angle, whereas ours, we have this 45 degree mark. Now what this does is, not only does it not block the screen, uh, it allows you to do transitions from high to low, low to high, uh, without the motor ending up in front of the lens. No, it's very cool, very cool. Uh, One thing I really do like is the, the added joystick here. It's a little bit bigger than any of the other joysticks you've had on the Osmo. But one question I have for you is, you know, in some of the cheaper gimbals, which I'm not really a fan of, if they become out of balance for whatever reason, they kind of rack back and forth. And I've heard of people breaking the lens. What is really the way that you would go about balancing the camera on here? And would that happen where it would like rack back and forth and kind of hit the lens and, and break it by chance? Now, the only time that would happen is probably when something comes loose. Like let's say the entire system comes loose and then the, gim the, the camera falls. Uh, the gimbal itself, uh, we have uh, reduction in power, like similar to the same technology that we have on the Ronin 2. It's not going to suddenly just drop power. Um, the power slowly decreases. Gotcha. Uh, and so it's not just going to suddenly do this and then probably pop back up. It's going to slowly drop if it's out of balance. Uh, the other thing that we have is uh, because you're not having to fiddle with an app and tune, uh, we have a quick auto tune where you press the mode button and the trigger button at the same time and it was auto tune. Uh, you don't have to pull out your app to do that. That's really cool. Now, so whenever I change lenses, though, I would have to rebalance it or use that auto tune function, correct? Yeah, depending on uh, how big of a difference the lens is. But if the lens is uh, not that big of a difference from uh, lens to lens, uh, the motor should be able to handle it out. What would you say is like the biggest lens you could have on here? I mean, because you've got a pretty sizable lens on this thing right now. Uh, it's not so much the biggest lens, it's more of if the lens is front heavy, you have to slide it back. And so physically, you're going to end up hitting this. And so um, we will have a counterweight system which will allow you to push the camera forward uh, and not have to slide it back so far and then you just have a weight here because our motors are so strong. It's very cool, very cool. I'm really excited about this. One question I have, I noticed this is an accessory for the Ronin S itself, correct? Uh, this is uh, this is currently a prototype. Uh, oh. This is the same uh, type of scan that we have for the Osmo series, but uh, the one that's going to be released with the Ronin S is going to be specifically designed for it. That's very cool. Now, would you have like some sort of larger suction cup too if you wanted to say mount this on a vehicle or mount it in another place? Uh, we will have multiple ways of mounting. So um, right now, these two sides, they are uh, data ports, but they also are mounting ports. Uh, the other thing, let me just turn it off. Okay. The other thing that we have is a third mounting point here. So this is the battery system. Very cool. Uh, if we were then to remote mount the battery somewhere else, uh -huh. and then have this mounted to the car, now this locks in place, 
the battery then powers through a wire. Wow. And then now you have an additional mounting point plus the quarter 20 on the bottom. That's very cool. So that battery, what type of time could we expect to get with the Ronin S on that one battery and what type of battery is it? It is a it, it is a smart battery like our, our flight batteries like and also like the Ronin 2 system. Uh, the battery itself, we are not releasing the exact specs yet. Oh. And so uh, we'll have a lot more details as we get closer to the shipping. Of this Very cool. Awesome. So when can we expect to see it in the market? Uh, the expected release time is quarter two of this year. Awesome. Well, Paul, thank you very much. I really right. appreciate it. Right. Thank, thank you. you for being on. Guys, you just got a first look at the Ronin S here at CES 2018. We're Elango Technology. This year we're announcing the Mystic drone at the CES. This drone combines advanced AI technology with flight control. So it understands its surroundings, it understands its users and can recognize its owners. And it can autonomously follow users and take a video, or it can follow your gestures to do things that the user wants. And this is gonna be super easy for the users. And then the price point is also gonna be very, very sweet. Now we're gonna head over to the Swell Pro booth. Now, if you're familiar, Urban Drones was actually working together with Swell Pro a long time ago and created the very first underwater or waterproof drone. That was the Splash Drone. Now they've perfected it, and let's see what else they have up their sleeves. We are the Swell Pro technology. We are the pioneers of the waterproof drone. Uh, it is all weather drone. Um, it can use it for the rescue, for photography, or even can monitoring the live wheels of the daily life. Uh, it is a, a very fantastic drone. Uh, we attached a lot of uh, fantastic uh, mechanisms like uh, payload release. And with the focal camera, we can uh, deliver the uh, life force or water or so some other stuff so to the uh, long distances. Something I found really interesting over here at the Sands Casino in the Expo Center was the solar drone. Now this is by the National Taiwan University and they've created a drone that can stay aloft for almost 40 minutes. It's really right under 40 minutes at 39 minutes and 30 seconds. And what's really interesting is they use a drone with a Pixhawk flight controller and they've done a lot of different testing on ESCs, motors, and props. What combination can you get the most flight time? So they're here at CES to show off what they've completed and here beside me I actually have one of their prototypes they're using carbon fiber props the motors are pretty small but the the propellers they're pretty big they're also using a carbon fiber frame and you can see these solar panels here that cover the entire drone now they say they're getting about 200 watts of power and they're staying aloft with this particular drone for about 31 minutes which I thought was really cool just another quick cool interesting thing that we saw here at CES 2018 this year at CES, we saw a lot of familiar faces that we've seen before from DJI to Swell Pro and Unique. Now, Unique did say that they were going to be launching their new Typhoon H with the E90 camera, so that would give us the features that we've been looking for in the H520 with the Unique, but it's not slated to release until mid this year. We also saw some players that have been in the community for quite some time, like Swell Pro, who has purely perfected the waterproof drone. Really excited to get my hands on one of their new vehicles. DJI released the new Ronin S, which is a single-handed, you know, large-scale gimbal. Really excited to see that. But this year at CES was also very different in that there are a lot of accidents and mistakes. The rain really came down this week, and it was actually raining inside the building at the conference at the Las Vegas Convention Center. So much so that it caused the power to actually cut out, and the main central and south halls were shut down for all of Wednesday. I know that's not what the press release says, but that's the reality of the situation. So this year was actually kind of tough for us to make our way around the drone center as it was closed for one of the main days that we were there. But it was also really cool because it forced us to kind of seek out some of the smaller drone players where we met the guys of the solar drone out at the National University of Taiwan. That was really cool. So from the start of the show, seeing the Intel drone taxi to seeing the solar drone in the Venetian Hall, it was all one large show. And because of the weather, it really forced us to venture out beyond our normal boundaries. Anyway, we're going to have a little bit more on CES, but that's going to do it for us at CES 2018. My name is Paul. And you're watching Ask 
Drone You. 